I'll answer the question. You want answers? I think I'm entitled. You want answers! I want the truth! You can't handle the truth! So today's video is supposed to be my breakdown of Marvel Comics' October solicitations, but a news report came out that I'm pretty sure is going to be of high interest to you all. Jonathan Hickman's House of X number 2 created an enormous buzz in the comic book community, and things just got a little bit more interesting. Some are claiming Hickman's story is plagiarizing Claire Norse the first 15 lies of Harry August. I'm also going to cover what I believe Greg Capullo's signing means for DC Comics. I'll briefly discuss a hodgepodge of Superman related news and a new Boom Studios project from one of my favorite creators that I think you should all be on the lookout for. I also have a very special announcement at the end of the video concerning a special broadcast right here on Thinking Critical YouTube this Saturday. I think most of you are going to be just as excited as I am. Let's get right into the big headline, accusations of plagiarism against Jonathan Hickman. I hope you're all ready for your comic industry news. Comicbook.com is reporting, Marvel Comics' revival of the X-Men franchise under the direction of scribe Jonathan Hickman has earned many fans for its drastic changes to the popular squad of mutants. Last week's release of House of X No. 2 introduced a major retcon to the Moira McTaggart character that reframes much of her impact on the X-Men canon, revealing she's a mutant with the power of reincarnation. However, because of Hickman's previous comments in an interview for one of his other comic books, novelist Catherine Webb has made it clear she's uncomfortable with aspects of her novel The First Fifteen Lives of Harry August possibly being plagiarized by the new X-Men writer. Webb, who published the novel under the pen name Claire North, pointed out the similarities to Morris-centric issue of House of X and even pointed out Hickman's praise of her novel, prompting many of her fans to accuse Hickman of plagiarizing Webb's work. It should be noted that Webb has since supported the work. Much like in House of X number 2, the title character in the first 15 lives of Harry August lives his life and is then reincarnated, attaining all the memories and knowledge he's gained from his previous experiences. And after Hickman's comment about praising the book, this seems like a smoking gun. During an interview with fellow comics writer Brian Hill for The Beat in 2016, Hickman spoke about Webb's novel while revealing his inspiration for his creator-owned title, The Black Monday Murders. I came up with the idea for the book when I was on vacation at the beach with the family. I was reading a book on economics. I mean, that wasn't all I was reading. It was my serious book. If I remember correctly, I think I was also reading Claire Norse, The First Fifteen Lies of Harry August, which is just fantastic, and the latest Expanse novel, Nemesis Game. And there was a section on the contrast of what money used to represent and what it represents now, Hickman said it. Hickman has since issued a statement in response to Webb's concerns denouncing any claims of plagiarism. After all, similar stories have used the exact same plot device, Groundhog Day, Edge of Tomorrow, Russian Doll, and Happy Death Day, for example. But plot devices and narrative are two different things, so the accusations of plagiarism won't be cleared until more issues of the comic book have been released. Here's what Hickman wrote in response to Bleeding Cool's request for comment. Well, this is unfortunate. The times this has happened to me, Pax Ramona probably being the most prominent, it's impossible not to feel like someone is trying to steal your kid. So I sympathize with Miss North's reaction. Let me just say that I absolutely have read Harry August, and I think it's wonderful, but I completely disagree with any idea that the narratives are similar. In regards to resurrection reincarnation stories, I'd argue that, in terms of story, style, and stakes, this is much more in line with something like Live, Die, Repeat than Harry August. The thing that it absolutely does have in common, and where the comparison is both accurate and fair, is that it repeats a lifetime instead of just a short period of time. But even that's something that Replay did 30 years ago. These are all just plot devices to tell a particular story, and while I hate to say this now, as we're only three issues into 12 issue story, what we're doing in the X-Books isn't a story about reincarnation. That's just a plot device we stuck in there to make the first act retcon go down easier. When this is done, it'll be very obvious to anyone who reads both that the two aren't the same. I would, however, tell everyone to go read Harry August if you haven't. It's about a rivalry between two men that goes on for several lifetimes against the backdrop of a secret society of people who reincarnate. Everyone should read it. Accusations of plagiarism are very serious and shouldn't be thrown around lightly. Comicbook.com framing the fact that Hickman previously praised the book in question as a quote-unquote smoking gun is irresponsible at this juncture. 
So far, only three chapters of the four 12-issue story have been released. Moira McTaggart's newly revealed mutant ability to reincarnate is most definitely a game-changer for the X-Men continuity, but nobody really has a single clue how prominent McTaggart's role is moving forward besides Hickman, his creative team, and Marvel's editorial staff and leadership. Her ability to reincarnate could be used to clear up X-Men continuity and nothing more. We have no evidence that isn't the case. Now I don't believe that, but I also don't believe her character arc is going to be the driving force behind Jonathan Hickman's House of X Powers of Ten story, but we won't know until more of it's published. Now, I also don't blame Catherine Webb for questioning the similarities between House of X number two and her novel The First 15 Lives of Harry August. She likely put in a ton of work creating that IP, and she should protect it from infringement of any kind, including plagiarism. I do believe they're both handling it well on their levels to this point. She was perfectly within her right to publicly question the similarities. Hickman responded appropriately with a written statement and sounds extremely confident that when all is said and done, everyone will agree he didn't plagiarize Webb's work. I'm glad neither are turning this into a public bloodbath. I'd hope fans follow their leads and handle the controversy with a plum. This will be an interesting story to keep an eye on. If there are any new developments, I assure you I will cover them. After reading Jonathan Hickman's statement, I'm pretty sure this will blow over and be rendered a controversy as more chapters of his X-Men story are revealed. Let's move from a surprising controversy to an equally surprising contract signing. According to CBR, artist Greg Capullo announced on Saturday that he has signed a new contract with DC. Along with the news comes word that Capullo will join his frequent Batman collaborator writer Scott Snyder on a secret project that he calls Biggest Adventure Yet. Capullo and Snyder's partnership took shape during the New 52 as the pair helmed DC's relaunched Batman series. The two creators worked together on the series for five years, crafting a number of critically and fan acclaimed stories, reinventing classic characters for DC's then new continuity, and introducing all new friends and foes for the Dark Knight. In 2017-2018, the two creators would come back together for the event series Dark Knight's Metal, which helped launch Snyder's tenure on the relaunched Justice League title. Capullo revealed in December 2016 that he signed a brand new contract with DC, but the announcement of Batman Last Night on Earth with Snyder delivered the news that his contract would most likely expire with the conclusion of the Black Label series. The reveal of Capullo and Snyder's new project may be announced this fall at New York Comic Con. I must say I was pretty surprised by this announcement. There were strong rumors that both Greg Capullo and Scott Snyder intended to leave DC to work on new creator-owned projects outside the big two. Snyder and Capullo are synonymous with each other at this point. Capullo is returning to his roots to illustrate interiors for Spawn number 300 for the first time in almost 20 years. And who was the special guest writer on the issue? That's right. That's right. Scott Snyder is guest writing the pages that Todd Bother himself is drawing. Needless to say, Scott and Greg are like peas and carrots. This is a huge coup for DC Brass. DC Comics seems to prioritize Tom King and Brian Bendis as their premier writers these days. Neither has anywhere near the Q rating of Scott Snyder, and he's easily the best writer of the three. Snyder's work with creator partner Capullo are huge draws for DC Comics and guaranteed sellers, which are becoming few and far between in today's market. I heard the two would be working on a creator-owned project at DC Comics soon, but I have no idea what it'll be. The duo's work on Dark Knight's Metal was a smash hit, and Batman Last Night on Earth is a critical and commercial success. Based on their past work together, expect the mystery project to be very entertaining, extremely dark and moody, and lead into the biggest idea Scott Snyder has ever thought of. <laughs> on a serious note, congrats to Greg Capullo and his family. This is great news for DC Comics fans. Now let's cover some random Superman news. Newsarama reports DC is asking retailers to destroy all copies of August 14th, Superman 14, and Supergirl 33 with replacement copies coming at a later date. Due to advanced production schedules, the covers of both issues ultimately did not reflect the contents of the stories DC told retailers. Replacement copies with new covers will be provided at no cost to retailers. The original covers are branded as Year of the Villain tie-in issues, however the new covers will not carry that branding according to the publisher. DC is also changing out the cover art with Superman 14's original Ivan Rice Joe Prado art 
replaced by a new piece from the duo. And Supergirl 33's Eduardo Pansica art, replaced by a new piece from Kevin McGuire, as yet revealed. With this, the new on-sale date for Superman 14 will be August 28th, two weeks later than solicited, and Supergirl 33 will be September 4th, three weeks later than solicited. Superman 14 is the advertised return of the Legion of Superheroes, and the new cover features a Legion logo in the bottom right. Honestly, this seems really weird. I'm assuming the issues no longer contain previously planned Year of the Villain material, and that led to the recall. I'm honestly surprised they let the comics go to print, let alone ship with out-of-date covers. This really puts retailers in a bad spot. There aren't a lot of big books from DC next week. Many are likely counting on moving issues of Superman and Supergirl to keep their sales numbers up. DC is replacing the copies at no cost, but the stores already sent the money out and will receive no return on investment due to negligence they didn't contribute to. DC leadership notoriously take an extremely relaxed and unprofessional approach to delays and recalls. Expect to see a more in-depth video regarding the high price of delayed and recalled projects in the weeks ahead. Comicbook.com also reports, Man and Superman, Marv Wolfman and Claudio Castellani's acclaimed one-shot that released earlier this year will find a second life as a deluxe hardcover collection. Wolfman told fans via social media today. The story was originally published as an oversized Superman one-shot with a story he penned more than a decade ago. Wolfman said at the time that he counts the story among the best things he has ever written, and it was a sentiment held by quite a few people selling out upon its original publication. Technically titled the Superman 100 Page Spectacular, the tale was originally created for the defunct anthology series Superman Confidential, but did not make it to print before the series was cancelled. Wolfman told fans on Twitter the hardcover edition will include his original pitch document, at least some of his script, and possibly some previously unseen art. Back in 2006, I wanted to write the story in a style that was very different from what readers expected from me. I also wanted to come up with several brand new Superman ideas in each issue that we'd never seen before. Wolfman wrote, When I was finished writing chapter one, I had succeeded. Maybe beyond what I was hoping for. And though I may be deluding myself, I truly think the story kept getting better and better. Wolfman and Castellini's Man and Superman Deluxe Edition will be released in comic shops on November 13. This is terrific news. I rated Man and Superman as my number one comic issue of 2019 back in June. Nothing has changed since then. It's still the best comic of the year. I absolutely love this story. It deserves consideration as one of the greatest Superman origin stories of all times. It was also a much needed break from Bendis' terrible take on the iconic superhero. This book will look amazing on the shelves of collectors across the world. If you haven't read Man and Superman yet, I can't recommend it highly enough. If you need good Superman in your life, this is the story for you. According to comicbook.com, few things are as debated at the moment in America as immigration. And while there are a myriad of opinions about how we should handle it, I don't think anyone expected Superman to jump into the fray. That's exactly what DC did though when Superman got a Twitter account and the hero didn't waste any time establishing who he is and what he's always been about. DC shared a video featuring a classic Superman PSA from 1960 titled Lend a Friendly Hand, which puts a spotlight on two children looking down on another child because he is a refugee, and Superman breaks down what's wrong with their thinking. The Superman account posted the video with the caption, For over 80 years, Superman has showed us the best in humanity. Hashtag Throwbacks Thursday, hashtag TBT, and fans have quickly embraced it on social media. The story focuses on Jim and another unnamed child who decide they don't want to bring a boy named Sandra along because he's a refugee and spout out stereotypical things like those refugee kids can't talk English or play ball or anything. Superman then shows up and offers to take them on a trip to learn more about refugees and why they come to America. Okay, first things first, I don't know why Superman needs a verified Twitter account. Maybe it would be cool if he were tweeting real time about ongoing stories in Superman and action comics, perhaps dropping hints about what's coming in the next issue. Heck, DC could even post fake news articles penned by Clark Kent and Lois Lane from the Daily Planet about Metropolis. That would be an interactive, fun way to promote the character in his comic book. Superman, a fictional character in a fictional America, tweeting about real-world controversies is tiresome and pointless in my opinion. This won't grow the character or sales in the short or long run. It could alienate some readers, 
But in all honesty, Brian Bendis already did that single-handedly. This gets a thumbs down for me. Superman transcends current day political disputes. Some may think this is a great use of the character, and I respect that point of view, but I certainly don't share it. Alright, final story before my big announcement and I take this new segment home. Boom Studios will launch Folklords, a new five-issue fantasy series by Matt Kent and Matt Smith on November 13. The story takes place in a world of magic and masters where a boy turning 16 decides to go on a forbidden quest for the Folklords, hoping they can explain his visions of well-pressed suits and modern technology. If you're a fan of fantasy books, you're going to want to give Folklords a shot. Matt Kent is one of the most underrated writers in the entire industry. His work on Rai, Ninja K, and Exo Mana were at Valiant Comics was extremely high quality. His writing on Mind Management and Black Badge are also excellent. If you want to get a taste of his fantasy stylings, I suggest you check out his Ether series from Dark Horse Books. I'm telling you, if you give Matt Kent a chance, he will not disappoint. Alright, let's get to the big channel announcement. It appears the channel will hit 1,000 subscribers by the end of the week. To celebrate, I'm hosting a 1K subscriber spectacular this Saturday. Alterna Comics publisher Peter Semetti, color artist and editor Brett R. Smith, artist and marketing expert Timothy Lim, self-published author and YouTube star David Stewart, and journalist, writer, and comic industry critic Doug Ernst are joining the all-star panel to help me celebrate a huge personal achievement. Join us for a fantastic conversation about comic books, publishing, pop culture, and wherever else the conversation takes us. Fellow YouTuber and comic book retailer Perch will join me as special co-host. I'll be celebrating the achievement with the comics aficionados the next Sunday for another all-star panel. I hope you join us for both streaming events right here on Thinking Critical YouTube. That just about does it, folks. The big news story is allegations of plagiarism against Jonathan Hickman for his reincarnation story in the pages of X-Men number 2. Hickman released a statement and assured everyone that's not the case and we would all agree when the rest of the story is released. I'm inclined to believe him. Now it's time to sign out, everyone. Thank you so much for joining me for today's Comic Industry News. I hope you return for tomorrow's June Comic Sales Analysis video. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. I would appreciate it very much. It helps us attract more views for the channel. Subscribe for future commentary, comic book news, and reviews. And don't forget to ring the bell for notifications. If you want to talk comics, movies, and much, much more, you can follow me on Twitter, at Wes underscore from underscore TC. With that, Salamat Po, and I'm out.